This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Talk Tame It Radio, the world's greatest radio, and you are now in touch with the compensatory concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is radio the way it should be heard. Now, Talk Tame It Radio or Talk Tame It is now on Facebook TV, and all you have to do is to log on to facebook.com forward slash talk tainment where you can now hear and see in this program in the, the compensatory concept like on talk tainment radio and you can also uh like us there and if you're interested you can also make a comment and at times they bring those uh, comments up to me and likes and i will read your name and sometimes um they will give me what um you have briefly said and make it brief as a matter of fact uh, i was uh, told to when you uh when you write me by uh, gmail which is uh the numeral seven mr bobby at gmail.com uh you don't need to write a book <laughs> there's only so much that, uh, time that i have to read uh, your uh letters and some of them are really interesting but but uh kind of cut that down a little bit if you can or condense it would be a better word and you can also get in contact with the show as usual by calling 1-877-932-9766 and we can um, have Mr. Fuller answer uh, your questions or even if you want to make a comment you can do that. Um, let's go on with the program live from Washington DC Mr. Nilly Fuller Jr. Good morning Mr. Fuller. Good morning. And how are you this Wednesday? I'm still learning. You are still learning. Mr. Fuller, uh, before we start the, the show off, I want to make mention to uh, a man in his death, well-known man, civil rights activist, uh, Dick Gregory. Uh, what have you to say concerning his life or his passing? Well, I, I didn't know him personally. Uh, he knew of me, and I knew of him by because he's well-known uh, worldwide. And uh, he, uh, other, other than that, I would say that it's a great loss. The, uh, but uh, these things do happen, and you can anticipate that they will happen. And particularly the people who are up in age, Dr. Gregory was 84 years old, and uh, he was reported being good health, and he always, he, he was a person who believed in paying attention to health all the time and whatnot, and, uh, but his passing came as a surprise to most people, uh, including myself. I didn't expect it. Uh, I was stunned by it because I always stay in the mode of always expect the unexpected. That's a part of the code. But uh, it is a, a loss because he was a person, in my opinion, who always looked at things in depth. He always wanted to look behind what was seemingly obvious, uh, what was up on the surface. He, he always, and this is this is a part of the compensatory codified process too. Just don't go by what you see right on the surface. Always say, now what's the story behind the story behind the story behind the story behind the story? Because sometimes things are not always what they seem. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, in this world, it's dominated by people who believe in white supremacy. You always have deception. Always. Yes. Deception is always there. Uh, because they couldn't survive without deception. And uh, in my opinion, Dr. Dick Ray 
Jehovah was always very aware of that and always believed in in-depth investigation in everything, yes. not just in some things, in everything that appeared that he always went in that direction. And that, to me, the investigative mind is what everybody, <coughs> excuse me, should have at all times when it comes to interaction between people in a system that's dominated by racism. Always be able to be in a frame of mind where you say, wait a minute, whatever is going on may not look, may not actually be what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's look further. Let's look further. Because not in all times, but in many, many, many instances, you find that things are not the way that they appear to be. Yes, sir. Sometimes you find this out many, many years later after the fact. Sometimes people just come out and say, well, the way we reported that at the time, we decided to do that at the time, but we, we knew it wasn't true. And, uh, but that's what we chose to do at the time. Yes, sir. But now that it's all died down and now that it's all over and whatnot, just for the historical record, we will make the records uh, like it ought to be. Mm, okay. And, uh, all righty. Well, thank you for that, uh, Brother uh, Jay. We kind of slipped in your question, but uh, that's okay. Um, good. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash talk tainment. That's where you can see and hear us. And you can leave a comment, hit the like button, and we'll go on. Okay, we're speaking in the area, the seventh area of people activity called religion. And um, let's start off on page uh, 265 of the revised an expanded edition of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, the um, revised expanded edition. And let's go down here. Here's a question. You said, or actually a statement. You said, uh, Mr. Fuller, be extremely careful in regards to everything that you say and do in in reaction or interaction with any white person who identifies him or herself by a religious title or who implies that he or she is a religious person who is trying to help you to end white supremacy, which is racism, and or help you to produce justice that it is balanced between people. Uh, could you explain it as we move on? Uh, yes. Uh, many people throughout the world say that they have a religion. Most people say that, I guess most, uh, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know for a fact, that most people in the entire planet say that they have some type of religion. So if a white person says that he or she has a religion, you want to know what that religion implies in his or her interaction with you. Yes, sir. Because uh, what does religion what does a religion mean? People, you know, religion is a strong belief backed up by action, in my opinion, that's the definition I gave to it in the textbook for victims of racism, and then the word God, <clears throat> religion itself is a strong belief back, backed up by action, so the procedure is with anybody, white or non-white, what is the name of your religion, if you're going to talk about religion, you want to know the name of the person's religion, then you want to know what does their religion require them to do? That's number two. Because religions, most religions have some type of requirements, some type of frame of reference about what you should do and not do. Everything is about doing or not doing, or believing or not believing, which is a form of doing. So you just ask a person, what, after you ask them what is the name of the religion, then what does your religion require you to do? And then the third one, what does your religion require you to do when you interact with me? I mean, that's if the person is talking to you. Those are the procedures when you, uh, when you before you get in the in any in depth talk about a person's religion, if a person is willing to talk about his or her religion, if that is the subject, then a person should be willing to talk about it. If they're not willing to talk about it, then you don't talk about it. But if a person wants to talk about his or her 
their religion, particularly if the person approaches you. Say, my religion, you know, my, this is my religion. You know, I am a Christian. I am a Hindu. I am a Muslim. I am a Jew. I am a Buddhist. I, I believe in the writings, and uh, my religion follows the writings of the Shinto religion or the customs of the Shinto religion, or of Confucius, or whatever it is, then you you have the name, you say, well, or you can ask for the name, what is the name of your religion? They say, well, Buddhism. All right, that's the name of my religion. Okay, what does your religion require you to do in all nine areas of activity? Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, other people's religions, sex, and war. And that just about covers just about everything yes, that a person does. does because the religion is supposed to. Then you add that, ask that third question, which is a very, very important question. What does your religion require you to do when you interact with me? Meaning, what does your religion require you to do when you see me coming, now, you know, I mean, take a look at me and, you know, and size me up and say, now, what does your religion tell you to do when you're around me? In all of those areas of activity, if we are going to interact with each other in the field of economics, what does your religion, according to you, tell you to do in the area of economics when you're around me? What does your religion tell you to do about me when it comes to education or to entertainment? Are you to, supposed to entertain yourself with me, even though I may not be of the same religion you are? Or are you not supposed to? And what type of entertainment? If we do agree to have some type of entertainment, whatever entertainment means according to your religion. And then the other areas of activity, activity mm -hmm. labor, law, politics. And you can even ask me, what is my religion and what does it require me to do? That's, that's the compensatory way. Yes. You know, so that everybody has what? An understanding. You know, get that understanding in front so you won't have what? Religious conflict. You don't want that. There shouldn't be any conflict in any religion, even though religions are different. Yes, sir. You know, so you don't want to be in a fight with somebody. You can get a fight with anybody about anything. Mm -hmm, you can. You know, a beer tavern fight. You, know, you can fight about the beer or whatever. So you want to minimize all kinds of conflict about religion. I mean, so you get an understanding. That minimizes that conflict yes, it does. about how you're going to interact with each other, or, or your religion might require you to say, well, look, uh, according to my religion, when I run across somebody like you, and uh, you are not of my religion, I'm not even supposed to talk to you. Well, you want to know that. So when I see you coming, I know that you are not going to talk to me, because your religion will not allow that at all, period. Mm. That's your religion. That's your religion. But I have that understanding, see what I mean? All right. Therefore, there's no misunderstanding. All righty. TalkTainmentRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news and lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and, uh, of course, politics. Now, here are several that I would uh, like to share with you. Let's get them in the light here. There we go. Uh, let's go with uh, Everlasting Life. That's one. Uh, my One of my favorites, New Money. And uh, next one is uh, Super Cool. Yeah. Now, all these shows are exclusive to Talk Tame It Radio, and all you can do is go to TalkTameItRadio.com uh, and then click on programs for the scheduled times. Now, this is all from Talk Tame It Radio. That's radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby, and I am the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and th this is what you can do. You now can uh, hear and see us by going to facebook.com forward slash talktainment. That's right, facebook.com 
forward slash talk tainment where you can see and you can hear us on the program. Also, you can still call us by calling one 932 9766 or you can Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com, and I will uh, read your. Um, yeah, I will read your uh, comments and all that. Going to the, uh, before we go to the phone lines, because we do have a call here, uh, let's see, let's give a shout out to Mohammed, uh, uh, Tana, uh, Daryl, Tina, Juju, Tony, uh, Ron, Alice, Pat, and Pam, who what? Pam, twist it like a pretzel. Okay, whatever that means. All righty. All right, talktimmitradio.com. Let's go to line number one. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, go ahead, sir. Okay, yes. Uh, Mr. Fuller, how do we deal with these sleights of hand in terms of the technology of our enemy? For instance, I'll give you an example. Those of us who are adults who ever dealt with children, <clears throat> if you're an adult and you have a rattle in your hand, and the child sees a rattle in your hand, the child wants it, and you as the adult don't want to give it to the child, all of a sudden you notice the child starts to make a fuss, starts to cry, starts to change his face, starts to yell and scream, and then you as the adult give the child a rattle, and the child, all of a sudden with the rattle in their hand, the child pacif gets pacified and calms down. For instance, so, so our people clamored for social equality in terms of using, having the ability to use public facilities, which I never had the, I never had the misfortune of not experiencing Jim Crow, so I'm not trying to disrespect people who fought against Jim Crow, but I'm just saying this much. The, in using and having the ability to use public restrooms to be able to sit by the toilet, many of our people thought that, you know, they have arrived in terms of reaching social equality. But in the grand, but in the grand scheme of things, it really means nothing because the Caucasian owns the building. He manufactured the toilet. He manufactured and installed the plumbing. And he even controls the water utility that supplies the water in, into, the, into the facility for you to flush the toilet. So the fact that you just have the ability to sit next to the toilet in and of itself is not socially okay, quality. Okay, wait a, minute, wait, that, wait a minute, bro, excuse me. For, just for the sake of radio, and you are making some good points, but could you condense that so Mr. Fuller can address that, please? Yeah, so the, so the, the question is, the question is, how is it that we can't see through these little slights of hand in terms of, like, the child, the child with the rattle? Just because you got the rattle as in the grand scheme of stuff, yes, you got a rattle, but in the grand scheme of things, the rattle means nothing. Okay. So yes, you have the ability. You have the ability to sit next to the white man in the toilet, but in the grand scheme of things, that really means nothing because you don't control the building, the pipes, the water, nothing. Okay, Mr. Fuller. Well, uh, uh, and the first page pages of the textbook, uh, I have a quote <laughs> in uh, both yes. volumes of the Word Guide and the Basic Textbook, and that is, if you do not understand white supremacy, racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will confuse you. Now, I make that statement. That statement is either true or false, but I say it's true because the system of white supremacy is the dominant social, political, and religious system on the planet in 2017. It's the dominant system. And what is the system of white supremacy? It's a system of domination and mistreatment of people of color by people who have chosen to dominate and mistreat people of color who are classified as white. The dominators are people who are classified as white, not all white people. Uh, in that category, but those who are able to be should be suspected of participating in the business, the religious order of what we call the system of white supremacy mm -hmm. and all nine areas of activity. So the way you express that, if I understand the question, is that everything that non-white people do is governed by those white people who have chosen to practice or participate in the practice of the system of white supremacy in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Everybody who is classified as black, brown, 
In other words, people classified as non-white or people who are classified as people of color are in the prison system mm -hmm. called the system of white supremacy. And when you're in a prison system, everything in the system is dominated by the white supremacists. And if you're a person of color, you're under their domination. Doesn't make any difference whether you're talking about a dining room table or a restroom or you're on a train or you have a job or you are a scientist or a nuclear specialist. You still come under the system of white supremacy because they have made a prison of the entire planet of everybody of color. Without exception, there's nobody of color who is not in that prison system. There's no such thing as operating outside the system. You were born in the system. If you have color in your skin, and the white supremacy has pointed you out as being a quote unquote non-white person, you're not classified as white. You're automatically eligible to be dominated and misused, mistreated by anyone classified as white and by anyone classified as non-white that the white supremacy is authorized to mistreat you. In other words, like telling a slave to beat the other slave, and the slave will say, well, I, I don't want it. This person is my brother. I don't want to beat him, him or her or what not you. I said, you pick up that whip and beat that your brother or your sister or your mother I said it. I am supreme over you. I'm a white supremacist. You will do what I say, or else. And you say, or else what? Or else I will beat you. How about that? Or I will beat all of you because you didn't beat them when I told you to do it. I'll beat you and them because I have all power. If you think that I don't, try me. And the white supremacists have been able to ever since the beginning of white supremacy, or whenever that was, to do that with every non-white person on this planet, according to all of the evidence. Yes. Not according to Neely Fuller, but according to the evidence. Okay. Uh, let's go to the um, Gmails here. Mr. Fuller, this is from Dr. Curley. He says, um, Mr. Fuller, if a female only wants to discuss misogyny, how should we, um, how should we work, how should we also work on solving the race problem with them? By misogyny meaning what? Meaning prejudice against females prejudice. or doing things against females, dominating females. You like with uh, President Bush, I mean not Bush, but President Trump said when he made some of his, uh, statements about what he would do to women and all that kind of stuff. Well, when it comes to non-white people, the white supremacists uh, decide how females are going to be treated on their planet. That's what supreme means. The white supremacists, if you are a person of color, if you have color in your skin and you have been classified as non-white, the white supremacists are the people who decide what black person is going to be with what black person in a so-called marriage. Okay. Or any uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay, well, let me ask you this. If Barack Obama had a, had said uh, what Donald Trump said, in particular about grabbing uh, females by their private parts, are you saying that he would have been treated differently or he would have got away with it just like uh, uh, Donald Trump did? Well, uh, when it comes to people of color, the white, I'm going to say it again, that's what white supremacy means. Black people, to put it in simplistic and truthful terms, unless I've been misinformed or unless I'm not telling the truth outright, black people's interaction with each other in the system of white supremacy is determined by what the white supremacists want. I can't go out and talk to any female on the planet unless the white supremacists say it's okay, either directly or indirectly. Now, they have said, you know, indirectly, that, yes, I want you black people to talk to each 
have. I mean, you know, I want black males for the most part to talk to black females and have sexual intercourse, have babies, and all like that. But under my jurisdiction, I allow you to do that. And there might come a day when I'll say that I'm not going to allow you to do that. I'm not going to allow you to even get together. Period. And, you know, the average black person will say, what do you mean you're not going to allow me? They say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who pays you? Who lets you even breathe here on this planet, boy? I tell you who you can go to bed with, and you know it. And you can go and ask your elders and whatnot, because I tell them too. That's what white supremacy means. We have to understand. It means supreme. It means you don't make any decision that they can't overrule. That's all it is to it. It's not complicated at all. But we have to understand it in that frame of reference. Sometimes mm -hmm. people will say, well, that ain't true where I am. If you're on this planet, it's true. Otherwise, Neely Fuller this morning in 2017, in August, is not telling the truth about that. Because everything is either true or false. Mm -hmm. No such thing is in between when you make statements like that. It's either true or false. The white supremacists dominate all non-white people in all areas of activity, not in some, in all, 24-7, every minute of every day. Wow. And if we don't understand that, we do not understand the type of government that we're in on this planet. Then that goes back to the opening statement in, in the book or even the opening statement that you may that you always make in, in the program if you do not if you do not understand racism. Could you say that again? So that if people you do not understand white supremacy. Racism. What it is and how it works. Everything that you understand will confuse you. Everything. Because everything that people do is connected. Whatever you do in the field of economics is connected to the field of education. Whatever you do in the field of education is connected with the field of entertainment and labor and law and sex religion. and religion. Mm -hmm. All of these areas are interactive. See, they are connected. Whatever you do in one area of activity is connected to other areas. When the white supremacists became supreme, and I don't know what year that was or anything or right, what era, right. but when they became supreme, they made sure that they could dominate all the non-white people in all those areas of activity, and the evidence shows it. Okay. TalkTamedRadio.com. We go where you go. Okay. Here we are returning to TalkTamedRadio.com. Again, we go where you go. Download. The TalkTamedRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That is radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby, and I am the co-host on The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And now you can see and hear us on Facebook.com forward slash TalkTainment. That's right. Facebook.com forward slash TalkTainment where you can see and you can uh, hear us. And speaking about that, a few of the people who have... Uh, called in uh i believe it's wanda williams thank you wanda uh moshi talib larry williams uh salim in new york Tariq, sarah say hello to hump sunny how you doing z uh angie marcella barbie and Irvin. thank you for um calling in and, and, and viewing the program, listening. You can, you can also uh, actually call the program by calling 1-877-932-9766, or you can Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And all I would ask, because you do make some beautiful points, but you need, really, you need to condense your questions on the Gmail, and then when you are asking, Mr. Fuller, I know you are full of energy, but kind of condense it because we are on radio and TV, and we cannot get it all in. So condense your questions to give Mr. Fuller a chance to not only understand it, but to address your concerns, and then that way we can all 
get an understanding of uh, your question and what's going on. But anyway, you can view the program. Now, I just dropped my pen. Anyway, you can view the program by going to um, and hear us by going to Facebook.com. That's forward slash Talktainment. And uh, you can uh, see us. Okay, Mr. Fuller, on page um, 269, a, a very good question came up. And it said that, um, almost in the middle, it says, Within the system of white supremacy, which is racism, what type of arrangement, and you have that in quotations, do white people, for the most part, have with non-white people in regards to religion? Well, uh, what I have here on page 269 of the basic textbook is that the answer to that is racist men and racist women, and these are the white supremacists yes. collectively, sometimes do much to help a particular religion to be more emotionally comforting to non-white people. In other words, you'll find a lot of comfort in their religion because they will allow that. As, uh, from an emotional viewpoint. But uh, they will help a religion to be more appealing to non-white people in regards to singing or dancing. Now, singing or dancing is a part of many, many religious ceremonies. So the white supremacists look at the uh, effect of singing and dancing, hand clapping and things like that, and they will make an assessment of it, and they'll say, oh, well now, is that harmful to the business of white supremacy? They say, well, we don't see any evidence of that, so we will allow those non-white people to sing and dance as a part of their religious ceremony. We will allow that. Why? Because the singing and dancing is no threat to us. Okay. See, they only will, uh, the white supremacists only object to what you're doing if it's a threat to the business of white supremacy, which means mistreating people based on color. So they'll look at that and they'll say, well, that actually, the singing and dancing seems to give comfort to the people. They feel better about themselves. They feel better about their situation in the world. Uh, it relieves the pressure and whatnot. And they, they look at that. They're very scientific. And they say, oh, well, we're not only allowed them to sing and dance, We'll help them to sing and dance. You know, if it relieves the pressure in our prison system called the prison of white supremacy, we'll allow our prisoners to sing and dance. We want them to be happy behind the prison walls, you know, that we have set up. And so it says here, uh, the, uh, they allow that and they encourage that. Yes. They will help or allow non-white people to get more thrills or more fun out of one or more religious practices, mm -hmm. you know, so that your religion becomes thrilling. It becomes fun. I mean, you feel better. You feel better about everything going on around you. Mm -hmm. And the white supremacists want that in your religion. They don't want you to feel, when you, as a part of your religion, like something is seriously out of order that needs to be corrected that you really need to get on it and start thinking about maybe getting rid of whatever is causing the misery and whatnot. They, they want you to feel good about the misery. Yes. And, uh, and so they will always help you to make your religion fun. You know, everybody likes fun. And, and this is why a lot of black people will say after a religious ceremony, they will say what? We really had a good time. You know, last time we were had our religious ceremony, that was really a good ceremony, and we really enjoyed ourselves. All right? Now, the white supremacists look at that and say, yes, as long as you're in my prison, as long as I can mistreat you and mistreat all the people around you, and whatnot, we want you to feel good about that mistreatment. Yes, it, it benefits them if you feel good about the way they want you to act. Yes, yes, and that's why they don't disapprove of, I of see. religion. So, I mean, among non-white people, until you do what? Until you start saying, well, we're going to do something about stopping people from being mistreated. 
now you and your religion are going to be in trouble. Yes. The minute you go down that road, yes. if you're going to do anything to stop people from being mistreated, the white supremacists are in the mistreatment business. So you are now stomping on their business, and they are not going to have that. They are going to stomp on you right. one way or another. Because you also have here, you said, what racist man and racist women, and you said, will not do is intentionally help a non-white person to practice a religion that will end white supremacy and or help that they person. You will get on your case. You will always know. All you got to do is just try to seriously help the people who really need help. All right? I mean, in a serious manner, on a large scale. All right? And that will, you know, include a lot of non-white people, uh, maybe. Okay. okay. The white supremacist said, hey, if I wanted to give them some help, I would give them help. You know, now you're going to start giving them help on my watch, using my facilities, Negro? <laughs> no, you're not. Not on my planet. If I want to help somebody, I'll give them the help. i help you. i allow you to practice your religion on my planet. And mm. don't you ever forget it. Mm. And if you get out of line, I got a thousand ways of putting you out of business. Okay. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go and simply download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. I'm Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller Jr. And it also can damage the internal organs of the child who is still growing in ways in which future physical issues can arise uh let's be clear whites beat their children also too or also because they still have a slave mentality toward upper class whites uh that's where the word slavic came from the slavs are the original slaves any any way rich people tend to spank or not discipline at all poor whites do the same things as poor blacks um mr Ford, you want to respond to that well, I, uh, I am duty-bound, according to what I've written, the compensatory code, to not in, get into any type of, quote, religious conflict with anyone except the religion of white supremacy. That's the only religion that I am authorized to criticize. I cannot criticize anybody who is a Jew, anybody who is a Muslim, anybody who is a Hindu, anybody who is a Christian, Anybody who is a Buddhist, Confucianist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I cannot do that. I cannot criticize any part of any person's religion other than the religion of white supremacy. Uh, everything written in my book is directed against the religion of white supremacy because the religion of white supremacy is against all other religions. They do not allow anybody to practice if you're a person of color, they do not allow anyone of color to practice his or her religion all the way. I mean, they will make you modify parts of your religion. They will examine everybody's religion. If you're a black person and you say you're a Christian, they will look at what you're doing and they'll say, oh, that part of your religion, you are not going to be able to practice that part of religion. Mm -hmm. Because that's bad for my business. Yeah. So if you're a black person and, and you're doing this or you're doing that and the white supremacists disapprove of it, and you have found this out from experience, they'll make you change that part of your religion. I mean, you'll say, well, this was handed down to me by my ancestors and all like that. Hey, fella, boy, gal, you are got, not going to practice that religion on my planet. Not, not that part. Now, the other 10 parts or the other 15 parts or the other 30 parts, yes, I've examined them. It's not bad for my business. I'll let you do that. But you'll say, well, yeah, but my Bible says, that, hey, what did I say? What did I say? I'm a white supremacist, and you are black. You do what I say. Now, you can believe what you want to, but you're going to do what I tell you to do. Yes. And the record... And the evidence shows that they have done this all over the world. All over the world. Among dark-skinned people. Mm -hmm. So I can't say uh, spare the rod and spoil the child. If your religion tells you to do that, to whip the child, then all I can say is that's what your religion requires.
requires you to do because Neely Fuller cannot tell you what religion to practice. Okay. I'm not in that position. Right. But I'll tell you what my, the code says according to what I've written. Okay, which which brings me to this point you here. Don't, you don't brutalize anybody. Anybody. So I what mean, you... That's what... You see, I do not... Okay. I'm a child, all right? See what I mean? So yes, when sir. you say, first of all, what's the definition of a child? In the system of white supremacy, I'm a child. Do I want somebody hitting me? Okay. All right? So I'm saying, no, you talk to people in order to get people to do what needs to be done. Which brings you me to beat them. Which brings me to this point, because they, they tell me I have to do this. You need to talk about your book at this at this juncture. So go ahead. Yes. Well, you can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. That will take care of everything. ProduceJustice.com. Now, I understand it's been brought to my attention in the last 24 hours that there's somebody out here who is putting a book out here and just starting it, too. And that uh, I'm asking them worldwide right now, stop doing that. If you want the book, come to ProduceJustice.com. I mean, don't go anyplace else because every place else is suspect because the white supremacists are now doing all kinds of things. I think they're even in the process of killing a certain number of prominent people. I think that even since we have talked about Dr. Dick Gregory, uh, they got all kinds of ways of killing people. And when people die under mysterious circumstances, always suspect who the white supremacists if those people are people of color. I don't care what the circumstances He was in are. good health. Yeah, at that's 84. what I'm saying. Yeah. So there's probable cause automatically. My mind went when I said that he had suddenly passed. He went into the hospital, and the report was that he was uh, talking to people and saying that he figured he'd be out in, you know, in a few hours, maybe right. a couple of days at the most, you know, after a few more examinations or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then he wound up dead. Now, you can kind of expect this, particularly at this particular time in history, this to be happening to a lot of non-white people who the white supremacists now are beginning to suspect may be effective. See, the white supremacists will not bother you if you're black. If they don't think that you're effective against the system of white supremacy. But if you're a threat... Yes. I mean, like, I've been out here for a long time. I've been out here for something like 40 years. My book is about uh, 1984 when it came out in the first form that was, you know, in the form that it's basically in now. I mean, it was out as far back as 1957 in scattered papers and whatnot. But finally, in 1984, I got the basic book out, and then the last edition has come out in 2016, last year. Now, the book has been out here. I have been out here talking against white supremacy. But the white supremacists pay no attention to anybody who's not effective. All right? But now you're beginning to hear what? You're beginning to hear the term white supremacy more than you ever heard it. Yes, that's I true. Think. Mm -hmm. At least in the time I've been on the planet, you're hearing people use the term loosely, whereas People avoided using that term. They'd say prejudice. They would. They'd say discrimination. Yes. They'd say bigotry. They would say, uh, well, just plain language, I mean, well, says some white people don't like black people, all right? But they would not use the term white supremacy. Now you have a lot of white people using the term. Yes. Now, what that means is that the term is now being commandeered by the white supremacists. And people like Neely Fuller could be in danger. It depends on whether or not the white supremacists decide, well, it's time for this turkey to get out of here. I mean, you know, he's, get, he's beginning to be a nuisance now. So we're going to get rid of him like we did, you know, thousands, millions of others. So right. we can get rid of people, you know, at the snap of a finger. That's which right. Which they can. Which they can do and have which done. Which they can. So Nothing you, can protect you. So you can go to ProduceJustice.com. And get yes. your book? Okay. ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. Get the book from there. Get the book from there. I mean, there's electronic stuff that's out here now that's been reported and whatnot. I mean, people are look. I'm having someone look into that because there's some illegalities there, too. The book is copyrighted, okay? So that's, you know, that's...
that can be considered theft. And a part of the code is don't steal anything from anybody, not just because it's neatly full of. I mean, I'm not mad at anybody or anything like that, but there's another reason. The book is being distorted. Yes. In other words, people are taking bits and pieces and whatnot and mixing it up for somebody, something else. In fact, people are using parts of the book and then saying this is associated with Neely Fuller. Yes. And then also doing things like name calling. The code itself, one of the basic pen stops, you don't call anybody any kind of name except the name that the person wants to be called. That is an absolute part of counter-racist codification. Why? Because it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything of constructive value yeah. to call any person, white or non-white, by a name that that person does not want to be called. Don't do that ever. Even if a person changes his or her name four or five times a day, I mean, in the morning, I mean, you yeah. ask, Paul, yeah. yes. what's your name? Well, what's your name today, Paul? Yesterday it was Paul. What's the, you say, well, today it's Paul. So you call him Paul all day long. But if he comes in the next day and says, my name is William, you know, call me William. Don't call me Paul. Okay. I changed my name last night, all right, to William. You say, okay, William, call the person by the name that the person wants to be called. What is that costing you? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Get out of that name calling. So for the sake of clarification, so the whole universe and those that are listening to the program, including those who are doing illegal things, you ask them to stop what now? Right now, go to ProduceJustice.com if you want the book and stop paraphrasing the book out of context. It's okay to use the material out of the book, or otherwise, what's the point in writing the book? Right. But put Neely Fuller's name on just the part that Neely Fuller wrote. But you can use some parts of the material. Don't do anything illegal like reprint the book, like some people are doing. They are They're putting their name on it, all right? Or reprinting most of the book and putting their name on it. That's illegal, and that causes what? Confusion. Confusion. And they're not standing by their, their own not work. They're standing by their own work. Separate the work. I, I quote other people all the time. All the time. I quote Mark Twain. Uh, yes, you I, do. Yes. Uh, you know, Mark Twain, well, one of the favorite quotes I have of Mark Twain was, I was proud to be able to answer promptly, and I did. I said I didn't know, <laughs> which is an excellent thing to say if you don't know something because Mark, that's the first step toward learning. Mark Twain said that. Yeah, Mark Twain said that. Not Neely Fuller. Neely Fuller's repeating what Mark Twain said, but I'm saying that Mark Twain said it. Do the same thing if you want to have clarity and focus and problem solve. Do not take someone else's words and say that you are saying it unless you say that you got it from someone else. That's what I do. That keeps clarity. Why? Yes. Because the white supremacists love confusion. And if they get what one person is saying mixed up with somebody else's, what somebody else is saying, and they will do that, they will do that, then you have confusion, and confusion means that non-white people will never be able to solve any kind of problem because confused people can't, can't solve problems. They can only make problems. Okay. Uh, going back to the uh, book here, you said on page uh, 269 at the bottom, which is, this is excellent. You said this, in situations where there is much confusion and or conflict about praying, use and or suggest the use of the following compensatory universal prayer. What is that, Mr. Fuller? Uh that's on page... Uh, Bottom of page 269 in oh, the revised... In situations where there is much confusion and our conflict about praying, use and I suggest the use of the following compensatory universal prayer. Now, this is just a suggestion. Suggestion, me, yes. When there is a lot of confusion about how to pray. And so, you know, according to my own religion, eclectic pluralism, which means trying to find a true religion, I quietly breathe in deeply, then breathe out. I do this this every morning myself. I I quietly 
breathe in deeply, then breathe out. I hold my breath, and then I release my breath. While doing so, think about the source of your breath and your breathing and how dependent you are. You're dependent on the source that created your breath. This is a basic form of the United Independent Compensatory Universal Prayer. That's the title I gave to it. Why? I say that's a universal prayer because everybody who's praying is breathing. Okay? So if you just think about the fact that you're breathing, because you breathe when you're asleep. So, but we don't think about breathing. See, and that's the important thing. So when I wake up every morning, like I did this morning, when I wake up, I hold my breath to see how that feels. When my breath, I'm holding my breath, that's very uncomfortable. I count up to about 10 or 20. Then I release my breath. And when I release my breath, I feel better. But while I was asleep, I was breathing in and out automatically. I wasn't aware that I was breathing because I was asleep. And that's to remind myself that every time I inhale and every time I exhale, that is not under my control. That is under control of whatever created me. All righty. Well, you know, when you hear the music, you know what that means. That is the end of the first hour of the compensatory concept on TalkTainmentRadio.com. So let me say thank you. Thanks for listening. TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, and radio the way it should be heard. Stay tuned for hour number two. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com. TalkTainment Radio, worldwide sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. Live call-in talk show. Dial one 932 and join the conversation here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. And now... Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Welcome to the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. And of course, this is radio the way it should be heard. Now take a listen to this. Now, right now, you can see and also hear us by going to facebook.com forward slash talktainment. That's facebook.com forward slash talktainment. And there you can there you can see and hear us. There's a like button button and also a point where you can leave a comment and they will occasionally run these comments or or give even give you a shout out, they will run them upstairs. So make sure you go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment. And then you can also call me by calling 1-877-932-9766. Or you can Gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com. And I will at some point get to your email. It may not necessarily be on this show, but at some point it will be. 
uh, read. Uh, we're talking in the area, the seventh area of people activity, religion. And if you missed the first hour, go back and get that. You can also get Mr. Fuller's book by going to where, Mr. Fuller? Going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. All righty. And what will come up on the screen is the method for ordering. Okay. That's where you can get the book, Pure Unadulterated, right there. And please go there and get the materials that you need uh the book in particular there are two there are two one is the uh, compensatory con and what is the other one mr fuller uh, uh, the basic book is a compensatory counter racist code uh it has actually three or four titles but uh i, I put those three or four titles there for a reason of which were all of which are explained in the book and the extended the extension to the basic book is really an addition to the basic book is the compensatory counter racist codified word guide. Okay, word guide. Showing you what words to use, what words not to use, and more importantly, what que what words, basic words in the English language to ask questions about when people use those terms. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's see, before we get into here, let me give a shout out to uh, Lloyd. Dev in Chicago, Illinois, if I pronounced it correctly. Alana Kincaid, which she has a comment. Uh, let's see, Anthony Weeks and uh, Larry Williams, I think, is on there. VGQ he had. Uh, anyway, uh, let me read this here. Uh, Alana Kincaid said, Mr. Fuller, how do you cal calculate most white people? Or how, how do you, it says, calculate most white people? I don't know what that means, but... If you could decipher what what she's saying, how do you how do you calculate most white people? That's what it has here on the thing. I, I don't know what what that means, but um, maybe maybe she's asking, "What do you think?" I I, I don't know, but uh, ooh, you know what? Um, because I'm not clear on that. Maybe uh, maybe you might not want to do that, uh, and then maybe she'll call in and 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 um, get the question answered or question asked. So I can ask it uh, correctly. Um, Mr. Fuller, on page 271 of the Revised Expanded Edition, could you briefly speak to this? Uh, I had a question here. What is the best and correct way for two or more people to pray together when they may be of different uh, religions? And then we'll take a phone call. Go ahead. Okay. If, if two people who are of different religions decide that they're going to pray, and this is just a suggestion. Yes, sir. Because I can't tell people how to practice their religions. I mean, that's dangerous to do so. Yes, sir. And it's not the correct thing to do uh, either. Okay, but this is just a suggestion. Just use the universal prayer because everybody breathes. So the answer is you deeply inhale and freely exhale the air and do it so, uh, do it silently while thinking of what the Creator most likely wants you to do with all that you have been given, not just your breath. But see, you're sitting next to the other person, and you're saying, I'm praying with this person. But see, both of you have been issued an individual mind. You you know, one person might be male, one person might be female, one person might be 80 years old, one, the other person is just 10 years old. But you're praying together, and you may have different religions. But at least if you're going to pray together, you can pray according to one universal religion, and that is you deeply inhale because everybody breathes. If they are going to pray, you've got to be breathing. So you deeply inhale and freely exhale the air that you've been given by the Creator, and you do so silently. You don't say any words at all because the words might get in the way. All right, and so you uh, think of the Creator while you're doing it. The Creator allows you to breathe. You wouldn't be breathing without the Creator seeing to it that you breathe. When the Creator is not seeing to it that you breathe, according to the evidence, whatever created you, you stop breathing, and then you're not praying, and you're not going to be doing anything once you stop breathing. In addition, several times each day, practice inhaling deeply. Holding your breath briefly and exhaling freely. 
do this as a way of reminding yourself that everything that you receive, everything that you have, and everything that you will have ever, like the air that you breathe, yes, sir. is a gift. Okay. So you don't, don't forget that. Every breath that you take is a gift. You didn't give it to yourself. Whatever made you gave it to you. Okay. That's what keeps you going. Do your best to use each gift that you have been given in the most constructive manner, meaning your entire body, really. Yes, sir. As all of them are at this time in the process of being returned. Okay. In other words, now what do I mean by that last statement? Every part of you that's been given to you, you're going to have to return all those parts. Okay. Return them where? <laughs> where you got them. From the creator. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, let's go to the phone lines here. Uh, what line are we going to? Line number one. Okay, line number one. You are now on with M Mr. Billy Fuller, Jr. Go ahead and please keep it brief. Yes, sir. Uh, peace and blessings. Uh, it's a very constructive action meeting. 2800 St. Louis Drive, Baltimore, Maryland, every Saturday, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Um, I just wanted to say I always put Mr. Fuller's uh, philosophy to the litman test. And I fill it with water, and it never leaks. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to give a shout out and thank all white people and non-white people that produce justice and out here creating justice to continue to fight and continue to struggle. And I thank all the white people who are not racist, not white supremacists, for all they do because they're probably underrated very much. So I never probably get any credit for what they do because they look on so bad. So I want to thank the white folks who are not white supremacists for all they do. And I hope they continue to work with us and help us. Well, I want them to continue to help. Okay. Us. Thank you. All right. You you are so welcome, sir. Okay, Mr. Fuller um, got a question from Dr. Javari. Uh, he says this uh, called the final point. He says on the final point, many people are unaware of this. Just like they got gay marriage to pass under Obama, they are working on legalizing pedophilia. As we speak, the group is called NABLA, N-A-M-B-L-A, which stands for North American Man-Boy Alliance. And they have a huge amount of secret donors funding them, including those tied to the Boy Scouts. We know who they are, no joke. In a few years, it will be legal to molest and sodomize little boys and girls. Watch it happen, and Americans do absolutely nothing to stop it. God is angry, and rightfully so. Mr. Fuller, you want to comment on that one? Sure, I've been talking about it for, you know, the white supremacists, what do they thrive off of? Confusion. And if you can confuse people sexually, you know, you start off real easy. I mean, you'll just say something like, Oh, well, I mean, you know, uh, what's wrong with a person doing this? What's wrong with a person being this and what, you know? I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we have always had, we got a, everybody, everybody in their family has somebody who's, uh, what a lot of people would say, kind of sexually peculiar and whatnot. Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, so you don't condemn them for this. And the code says, no, you don't, you don't say anything. You don't go out and beat up on someone who is classified as transgender or gay or lesbian, and you're going to hit the person or whatnot uh, because that's that's what the person said that they are and whatnot. The code says, no, you do not do that. But here's what's going on. The white supremacists have a plan for the, all of this sexuality. Yeah, I don't care what category it is of non-white people on this planet. And that plan is absolute uh, confusion, which means destruction of the person's mind and eventually the destruction of a lot of people's bodies like they have already done. Right, AIDS. exactly. All right? And this was all concocted. I mean, this is all a master plan. Every bit of it. I mean, you know, they even, uh, what you might call tailgated, mm. uh, the term, or hijacked the term rainbow. The rainbow coalition back in the 1980s, I think, was associated with 
Mr. Reverend Jesse Jackson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Rainbow Coalition. And so the white supremacists, I think they had something to do with saying, hey, we all are part of the same thing when it comes to sexuality. All right? It's not just rainbow, you know, when you start talking about civil rights, because civil rights will include uh, nationally one of the, the most important areas of activity, sexuality. I mean, what about civil rights when it comes to sexuality? And then they began to seep in little by little. Well, let's try this. Let's try that. Okay? And you start off with what? First they said, well, we have some people called gay. And then they said, well, it's not just gay, whatever that's supposed to mean, all right? Because they've never really described what it means to be gay, okay? In a way that I understand it, at least. I mean, it's a very broad term. Yes, then yes. they'll say, well, it's not just being gay. I mean, you know, there are people who are not gay. I mean, you know, but they, you know, they are, they are not what you call heterosexual either, but they are not gay either, or maybe they are gay, or maybe they are a combination of both, or maybe none of the above. Confusion. You know? Yes. See, that's what the white supremacists are doing. And they, you know, scatter sexuals. I mean, you know, uh, uh, fake sexuals. Uh, and uh, recently, they have even added something that used to be said as a derogatory term, queer. Yeah, they, now, what's, the the sure is. what's the difference between queer and gay? Or metrosexual, or, I heard or that metrosexual, term. metrosexual, all right. You know, uh, are you talking about a transportation sexual? <laughs> a, a, a person who, when they get on a metro train, or, you know, or, well, what does that mean? And how does that differ from other, every other sexual? What, what do you actually do that makes you different? So all this is orchestrated confusion. Other, right. Yeah, there you go, and see, and uh, here in the textbook for victims of white supremacy, I have listed, just as a hypothetical, a great number of possible sexualities, and and actually I think it's around 70 that I think you can mm. actually come up with. Wow. So it's just a matter of using words. Yes. See, it's all words, but see, they're not saying anything about what people who are not just male with female, which is what the textbook says sex really is, all right, male with female doing anything, even if they're just baking donuts together, or, you know, or riding next to each other on an airplane. It's a male sitting next to a female, all right, you know, and so they say, well, hey, you can call that unisex, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard that. a male sitting next to a female. See, so it comes down to definitions. What are you talking about? Words. And the only way you can make a distinction between one and the other, you got to tell what the people actually do. Now, to give you an illustration of what I'm talking about, I was in a church where people were saying, discussing this. And I said, well, since they are saying now that the new sex forms of sexuality, and there are going to be dozens and dozens and dozens of them, possibly, Okay, how are you going to handle this, say, in the Christian church from a religious standpoint? When you started off with male and female, now it's going to be a number of things. So since black people, you know, lots of black people are churchgoers, how is this going to be handled in the, say, for example, black Baptist church? I mean, when you get to be, when you have maybe 30, 40, 50, 70, 200 different categories of sexuality, all right? As many as 200. I mean, you know, because all it is is just labeling, okay? And what are you labeling? Well, different things. I mean, one person will say, well, I am, uh, you know, I'm transgender, but, you know, I'm also a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, of something else. And they'll come up with, you know, I'm, I'm a scatter sexual too. And you say, well, First of all, what's transgender? And say, well, then, then you explain what that is and say, but I'm also just a little bit, not only of transgender, but scatosexual. So if you're explaining that to a preacher in church and you're saying, and we're part, part of the church community too, I mean, you know, 
don't don't say that we are not in connection with with our God and all like that. And I'm also a Baptist in your church, Reverend. So you know, and I want this whatever we are doing to be praised. Uh, you know, I want us our church to be representing in the parade. You know, when we have our you know our scatter sexual parade, we want members of this church to be out there. Okay, what about that, Reverend? And the Reverend says, well, I don't know about that. Well, if you don't know about it, ask for a demonstration, because that's what I asked for when I went to this particular church to make a talk about the code. I say, well, the people who are coming in saying that, you know, this is all praiseworthy and that, you know, it should be recognized by the church and all like that and supported by the church, have the people come into the church and demonstrate what they're talking about. Okay. Uh, All right. Come yeah. right up here on this podium. Yes, sir. Right under the cross and actually commit the acts. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that, oh. That's what I told the people. Now, whether they did it or not, I don't think wow. they did. Wow. But wow. I'm saying, hey, when you have confusion, what you want is a demonstration so that that clears up the confusion. Okay. All right. Um, I just looked up under this NABLA. You know, you always have instructed us to follow the logic, so I ask questions, and so I ask uh, this question, and it is uh, the North American, and I'm reading this uh, the, from Wikipedia, the North American Man-slash-Boy Love Association is a pedophile and pedestry active advocacy organization in the United States. It works to abolish age of consent laws criminalizing adult sexual involvement with minors and campaigns for the release of men who have been jailed for sexual contacts with minors that did not involve coercion. The group no longer holds regular national meetings as of the late 1990s to avoid local police infiltration. The organization discouraged the formation of local chapters. Around 1995, the undercover detective, dis detective discovered that there were 1,100 people on the organizational role. In 1997, NABLA was the largest group of in uh in of IPCE that is the international pro pedophile activist organization wow since then the organization has dwindled to only a handful of people with many members joining online pedophile networks and they gave a whole list of them as of 2005 a newspaper stated that nabla was based in new york and San Francisco. So Dr. Javari, who had just brought this to our attention, and we'll get that to that phone call in just a moment. Yes, there is a such organization called the North American Man Boy Love Association. If I wasn't reading this, I, I, I wouldn't believe that. Wow. This is really incredible. But then you can see by what's going on on the television or what you see uh, going on, period, the confusion that goes on. Before we take the phone call, let's do this. Talk to him at radio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as health, wellness, news, lifestyle, sports, law, religion, and, of course, politics. And here are several that I will share with you. Um, Pastor O speaks, which usually follows this program, uh, at the table, and then Senior Agenda. Now, all these shows are exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com, and all you have to do is go to our homepage and click on Programs. Hey, while you're there, why don't you hit that Donate button, too? You can do that, too. Uh, anyway, you can click on that for the times of these scheduled programs and then listen to the scheduled programs that are on there. All this is exclusive from TalkTainmentRadio.com. Yeah, Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. And while you're doing that, look, you can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment to see and hear us. You can hear, hear there's, a, there's a like button on there. You can hit a comment button, all that. We will give you a shout out, call your name out, all that. Or you can simply call 1-877-932-9766 or 7, the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com. And we'll try to get your... Um, Comments on. Anyway, let's go to the phone lines. What line are we going to? Line one? Okay, line one. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Go ahead, please. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I had a question for Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller, um, when, when, uh, when your call host says that uh, go to Facebook and see us, can people see you on, on Facebook as well? No, they don't. Uh, I have tried to... Uh I've been considering 
uh, having my picture up there, and, and that's been talked about. I don't know what decision has been made, because other people are also talking about it, too. But the main thing is, I am trying to de-emphasize the personality cult, all right, mm -hmm. uh, where my material is concerned. Now, other mm -hmm. people, you know, people who are in show business and whatnot, hey, definitely, they want, that picture needs to be out there. If you're in show business, if you're going to be singing and dancing on the stage and making uh, motion pictures and whatnot, and that's, you know, your craft, uh, definitely you want your picture out there. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, motion pictures and whatnot, uh, still pictures. You want your picture as much as you possibly can. But counter-racist codification is about science. I want to emphasize the science. Because we are not scientific about handling racism at all. We're all emotional about it. We have tons of emotion when it comes to just talking about the race issue. But very little science. So I want to point everyone on the planet, because I think that's where the solution is. That's the missing link. We're not taking a scientific approach. In other words, scientific meaning you do what actually works. Not sitting around hoping that it works, but you know that it will work when you do it. You plan it. You, you like making a blueprint. That's what codification is. counter racist science is you have a blueprint. We do this. We do that. We won't do this. We won't do that. But you don't have black leaders in the system of white supremacy. Why? Because we're not qualified. Okay. No black person is qualified to be a black leader in the system of white supremacy. Okay. In the system of white supremacy, all of the leaders of black people are white. All righty. Did you have another question before we uh, move on, ma'am? No, sir. Thank okay. you. I, well, well, wait, wait. One, well, I, yeah. Listen, when 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 you when you announce to go to Facebook and see us, you know, and people go to Facebook and don't see Mister Fuller, is that does that create disappointment and confusion? Uh, it could. Question. It, it could, but I'll just say this. I'm reading from a script which has that, you know, on there. So I know that Mr. Fuller is not on there, but I'm just reading what they say. So we don't, we don't want to confuse you. So, uh, maybe they'll make an adjustment to that. I don't want to say you can see and hear me, but that's basically it. But I'm not the focus of the program. You see what I'm saying? I am not the focus of the program. The focus of the program is Mr. Fuller's work. And that's what we try to emphasize. But they want you to go to Facebook.com slash TalkTainment, and it says now you can see and hear us. That's what it has in front of me right now. So that's what I'm reading. Yeah, well, they should correct it so yeah, it's more they, truthful. Okay, well. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, now for that caller that just, uh, not that one, but the one that was calling and couldn't get in, uh, call back. The line is now open, and um, you can you can get in. Um yeah, you, you can get in. Uh, while we're doing that, Mr. Fuller, a question came up from um, the uh, Gmail. It says, um, and, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this person's name, but anyway. It says, if a white supremacist has a child with a white person, is the child half white supremacist? No, white supremacy is a, is a mindset. Uh Millions of black people look like they are white. They're not white supremacists. They're not qualified. You've got to be white. You've got to be classified as white. That's a classification. And only the white supremacists can classify people. Why? Because they're in a supreme position over the non-white people of this planet. So they decide. You've seen dark-skinned people who you say, well, that person is not white. But the white supremacists will say that 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 person has color in his or her skin. You can look at it and tell. But the white supremacist says, well, I have said that this person is going to be classified as white. Why? Because I said so. I determine who is white and who is not. The white supremacists do all over the planet. They, you know, black people can call themselves anything, but it's only when the white supremacists speak that that becomes valid. They determine the classifications of people. Now, this is very confusing to the non-white people. And what? It's supposed to be. See, non-white people can't even tell who's white and who's not till the white supremacists say who's white and who's not. It's a lot.
lot of black people. I mean, you're looking at them every day. They're in your family and whatnot, who look exactly like they're white. I know this, and you know this. I mean, I guess non-white people, I guess. I can't say what other people know. But huge numbers of non-white people have in their families, quote, unquote, families, non-white people who look like they are white. When you look at them, they look like they're white. Lots of people who, right now, who are listening to what I'm saying, have white skin. If you look at their skin, their skin is white, just as white as any other white person's. I mean, but they're classified as black. Mm -hmm. Adam Clayton Powell, if you want to just name a few people, I mean, in what you call, uh, say, if he's Adam Clayton Powell walks down a street, say, in Spain, all right, well, I think most people, if he was around today, would, you know, say that Adam Clayton Powell, a Harlem congressman for many years, was a white man, okay? Adam Clayton Powell himself was asked about uh, his shade. Okay. And he said, black is not a color. It's a way of thinking. A way of thinking. That was the way that he said it. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. TalkTimeAtRadio.com. We go where you go and check us out on 94.1 WGRN. Podcasts are available. Download the TalkTimeAtRadio.com. <laughs> Returning back live, uh, TalkTimeAtRadio.com. We go where you go. Download the TalkTimeAtRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Now, I am Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, who is in Washington, D.C., live, speaking to us over the phone line. Now, for those of you that pay attention to the show, listen to this. You can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment. That's facebook.com forward slash talktainment, where now you can hear and see the program. Let me say that again. Facebook.com slash Talktainment where you can uh, hear and see the program. Okay? How about that? All righty. <laughs> Woo! You can also call at one 9766 or you can Gmail me at uh, the numero 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com it's it's not personal it's just business uh let's go to the phone line what line are we line number one okay line number one just this line number one hey man yeah wait a minute let me let me, let me get the clock started hey they love you by the way i want to tell you that they love you okay uh get ready set go well, I'm glad to uh, uh, hear that they love me because I love them too. I love life <laughs> and I love humanity, and that's why I call. I ain't heard nothing. I ain't heard a thousand times, and I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't said a thousand times. The process of understanding or perceiving a coming evil has put many people into a situation of the utmost danger. That is exactly where we find ourselves today in this country. Many of us do not see or perceive the coming evil that these psychopaths have planned for us. Since we were enslaved here, we have been on a system of systematic genocide. Since we've been here, we have been on a system of systematic genocide. There comes a time when that systematic genocide is going to graduate to extermination. That is the time we are coming up on right now. Mr. Hitler told the German people, have no pity, act brutally. And that is what these people have been doing to us since our encounter with them. Now, we are not going to defeat these psychopaths. Stop playing with yourself. So what you got to do as an individual, you have to go and try to go somewhere and live out your life or take some grandchild or some child 
I know these psychopaths run the world. I was in Vietnam. They sent me there. I know they run the world. But they go to different places at different times to do certain things. But you, you, all you got in this world is your life. And you can stay here and give it up to them for nothing. Or you can go somewhere and try to live your life out. That is where you are. Now, I love Mr. Fuller. I love his thought and his mind. But force and violence rules the world. If you look all back through history, that is what you're going to see. You're going to see force and violence. All right. They have been fighting them people in Afghanistan for 2,000 years. And the, and, the, and the last 16 years of the United States been there. If Afghanistan had to just try to talk to them, they would have been done with. <laughs> they had to fight. All right, Come my on. brother. All right. Okay, brother. Appreciate it. Hey, appreciate it. That's my brother from Chicago. People really love him. Hey, listen, one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number that you can call. Let me repeat that for my brother here, my other brother uh, that's called and said that I need to repeat the number. Uh, who was that? Uh, hey, Nate, Nathaniel Turner. He said, uh, repeat the number. So I'm going to do it again. One eight seven seven nine three two nine seven. Six six. You got that, Brother Turner? Okay, and then uh, for uh, those that want to look at the program, go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment where you can see and hear the program. Uh, I guess that's the polit politically correct thing to say. You can uh, hear and see the program. You will not see Mr. Fuller. You will see me. So we don't want to bring confusion on that. And I say that for those who were listening that heard the phone call that uh, there may have been some confusion when I said that you can now see and hear us. No, you can. How about this? Now you can see and hear the program. Okay. It's, it's not personal. It's, it's, it's business. Okay. Uh, let's see. A few shout outs here. Uh, Larry Williams. Again, good morning. Uh, Calvin Boopy McGee. Good morning, Mr. McGee. Uh, Robert Smothers the third. Okay, Trey. And, uh, Pam twisted like a pretzel. Whatever that means. Okay. Thank you for all listening. Hey, since we have this moment, let me have Mr. Fuller speak about his book. And Mr. Fuller, could you basically repeat what you said in the first hour? Uh, concerning your book for those that did not hear and what you want to be done. This is at the 45-minute uh, break, Galen, which is not 45. Okay, Mr. Fuller, go ahead. Yeah, the book is a concept that's directed to the individual victim of white supremacy. If a person does not consider him or herself a victim of the system of white supremacy, then the book does not apply to that person. That's the first order of business. That's what the book is for. If you perceive yourself as being a victim of racism in the form of the system of white supremacy, directly or indirectly, in any one or more areas of activity, then there are suggestions in the book about what you as an individual can do about it or say about it or react to it. And just suggestions, you can take them. It's a democratic uh, process. You read what is in the book and pick out those parts that apply to you according to what you think you should do. And not what the other person down the block should do and all like that. Uh, they can pick out whatever they want that would apply to them. But it's entirely democratic in that way. Because I say that that's the missing link. Okay. That everybody should have something that applies to him or her as an individual about what you can do each day or not do. I mean, there might not be anything in the book that you think applies to you. Then dis disregard it. But the book is written to kind of make suggestions about what to do and say in a racist world, in a world that, where your affairs are dominated by people who believe in mistreating people based on color. 
That's what it's about. Okay. You can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com, and there's an extended volume there called The Word Guide. You can either get the basic book or the Word Guide or both. A lot of people get both. Yes. Okay. And, okay. And, uh, go to ProduceJustice.com. Okay, and real important, Mr. Fuller, what you said in the first hour about you used the word stop. Could you, uh, just in, re, in regards to the book, can you just hit on that just for a moment? In regards to the book, yeah. Uh, you used the some word people, stop. Yeah. yeah. What some people are not using the book correctly. By, for one thing, some people are, have reprinted the book electronically. That I have not authorized that to be done. That 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 should be stopped. That fact that's illegal. That's a copyright violation. Part of the code itself is you don't violate any law unless you let people know that that's what you are doing and intend to do. All right. I mean that's just the way it is. The code itself says that you can violate laws because the white supremacists make a lot of laws and violate them too. Yes, <laughs> and you may not want to adhere to those laws. Uh, Martin Luther King violated a, law, a lot of laws that the white supremacists had made, according to the reports that I got, all right? And he said that's what he was doing, because these were unjust laws. But now, the law that governs copyright law, you shouldn't violate that, not because some white supremacists directly or indirectly say so, but because this shouldn't be done because of one primary reason. It causes confusion. Yes. All right? So you don't want Neely Fuller's words mixed up with somebody else's words. Everybody stand by his or her work. Absolutely. I stand by mine. If I uh, quote Mark Twain, or I quote Martin Luther King, or I quote Rodney King, like I sometimes do, I say, this came from Rodney King. This is not coming from me. I'm just repeating what he is reported to have said, or what I saw him say on television. And I'll say that. And everybody else out here who is what you might call dabbling in the code should make clear who is saying what. Put your name on what you're doing. I put my name on what I'm doing, the name I've been given anyway. I mean, I'm not hiding, all right? Who are you hiding from? Why are you hiding, all right? So make it known who's doing what and what reason you're doing it and who's being compensated, if anything. All and right. Make this clear. You have to have truth if you're going to fight white supremacists. All righty. Because the white supremacists deal in what? Falsehood. Falsehood and confusion. And confusion. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Fuller. So go to producejustice.com. Now, somebody asked before we take the phone call, you know, why are we on Facebook? Well, these people that Mr. Fuller has referred to have been doing a lot of things. We've discussed it a little bit, but not in depth. There's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes. So what TalkTainmentRadio.com has done is get on Facebook uh, because you, you have to keep up with the technology. You have to keep up with social media. This way, when you tune, tune in to facebook.com forward slash talktainment where you can see and hear the program you get the pure unadulterated program you get to hear exactly what mr fuller is talking about the exact words it's not edited it is simply by script so i mean simply by ad lib we just we don't rehearse this show we don't it's it's live with mistakes and all. Now, what the other people do, they can add, uh, cut out certain points, just like what Mr. Fuller just talked about. If they don't want you to hear that, then you won't hear it. That's why we encourage you to go to uh, Facebook.com slash forward slash Talktainment where you can get the pure, unadulterated program, uncut, unedited. It, it is or what it is, and that is so we can compete with the social media because they can put the program up, you know, right away. And now we can too. So anyway, go to Facebook.com forward slash Talktainment where you can hear the program. Okay, I'm ready for that phone call. Are we ready? Okay, line number one. You are now on. Go ahead, please. All right, thanks for taking my call. My name is Ernest, and I'm calling from Ferguson, Missouri. And I just want to say, uh, Dr. Fuller, your books have completely changed my life. But, um, I do have a question. Okay. If, if at one point in time, as the evidence shows, white people were not on the planet, so that would include white supremacists, would it be worth our economics, time, and energy 
spent towards studying that period in time? Well, uh, that depends on the individual. See, that's why I call it the United Independent System, Compensatory Code System concept. The United Independent, we are we should be united in what we intend to produce, and that is a thing called justice. Replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. But we, because we are individuals, and we're scattered all over the planet in different places and in different environments, so each person should pick and choose what he or she is going to study and in what order, in order to get the job done ultimately. Because our circumstances are different. Some people have more time than others. All right? Some people got a lot of time to do a lot of research into everything that every that that has to do with racism. Everything when it got started, what the name of the person was that actually got the first idea mm -hmm. for the idea of racism. Yes. You can probably do some research and find that out. But uh, the person next door to you probably say, hey, I got a problem on my job right now, this morning, that I got to deal with. Yes. I don't have time to go back and find out how all this mess got started or who started it. I got to deal with these people on my job today. And is there anything in that book that Neely Fuller got or somebody else got that can help me deal with that? Because I got to deal with it right now. In the next half an hour, I'll be on the job. And I got to go in and explain this and explain that. How am I going to go about doing it? Well, see, that's why I wrote the book in such a way that I say, yes, if you think that there's a need to find out the exact, the exact name and address and the whole history of the first person who got the idea that white supremacy should be something that should be invented and went through the process, started the process of inventing it. Somebody started it. And so if a person wants to study that, they can, if they think that that will help them to do what they need to do here in 2017. And study anything or everything, all right? But then another person may think, well, I would like to do that, but I don't have the time. Yes. Okay? So it's just an individual choice. Okay. Of what you do. Study everything in the universe because the white supremacists do, if you have the time and the resources. Okay. All right. Thank you, my brother from Ferguson, Missouri, and we all know what happened down here. Just a couple of shout outs here. Uh see Sherry Pun Pun. Uh Cheryl Lee Walker, I believe that is. Uh Anthony, Brother Sloan in uh South Africa. Thank you. Uh, great contributor, Mitro in the French Guiana, and to all the brothers in Copenhagen, Denmark. Worldwide, thank uh, thank you. Go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment where you can hear and see the program. <laughs> it's not personal. It's just business. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go on from here. Uh, from the Gmails. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this Gmail person's name. But anyway, uh, this person says, Mr. Fuller, there is a movie named Silence that really explains what m you, Mr. Fuller, are talking about when you said that the white supremacists control the major religions in order to further control the masses. The movie is about Europeans trying to spread white supremacy in the form of Christianity in Asia, but the Chinese caught on to what they were doing and tortured all the missionaries that came into their country until they renounced Christianity, white supremacy. Hmm. I highly recommend this movie because it shows how the white supremacists use the religion of Christianity to spread their beliefs, which they used to conquer the world. Mr. Fuller, your comment on that. The white supremacists position themselves on every side of every argument. Yes. Now, this is very important to know in the year 2017 because there's a lot of confusion out here. But remember, the white supremacists are the masters of what they do, and that is 
be supreme over all of the non-white people 24-7. 24-7. Directly and indirectly. Yes. In every area of activity, including religion. Including religion. So the religion of white supremacy is the strongest religion on the planet when it comes to non-white people. No religion is stronger than the religion of white supremacy. Yes. But the white supremacists in their tactics, in their strategy, they will claim that they are members of any religion or of all religions. Uh-huh. A white supremacist at 12 o'clock noon will say, I am a Christian. I'm not only a Christian, I'm a Mormon. All right? And then by 2 o'clock that afternoon, that same white supremacist, if it will work for them, will say, I am a Muslim, and I believe in the Prophet Muhammad, and I believe in everything that he said and did, and I am a devout follower of the Prophet Muhammad. And then by 6 o'clock that afternoon, that same white supremacist will say, I am a Confucianist. I believe in Confucian, you know, and everything Confucius and everything that he said and everything that he did and everything that he outlined for us. And I don't believe in any other, and I don't follow any other person except Confucius. Yeah, except He's Confu- got it all. Okay. Now, that person has done that all in one day. One but day. What that person really is practicing is white supremacy. White and supremacy. And what that person is doing for saying these things is to get a greater grip on people who have color in his or her skin. That's, they, they are devoted to that religion only. But what am I saying? A white supremacist will say that they believe in anything that they can get you to believe that they believe in. Yes, that. sir. But they are always practicing white supremacy. Okay. And, and that's what they do that in every area of activity, whether it's politics, whether it's religion, with the sex, they will be anything that yes. they think they convince you of. Yes, in sir. In order to do what? In order to greater dominate you as a person of color and mistreat you yeah, when they dominate. Yeah, that's called confusion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, let's do this, and maybe we'll end the show on this one. But on page 271 of the revised expanded edition of the code book, uh, you said this near the bottom of the page. It says, in regards to religion and or spiritualism, what is the one thing that you or anywhere, anyone else should never do? You see that there, Mr. Fuller? On page 271 near the bottom. Right. It said, question, in regards to religious or religion and, and or spiritualism. spiritualism. Mm-hmm. What is the one thing that you or anyone else should never do? Never do. And that never is? Never poke fun at or make insulting remarks about anyone's attempts at communicating with all power. That's what the code, that's the, the, the common term that I use right. in the textbook for victims of white, white supremacy. Yeah, finish or, that. With all or, power? Or what we call the creator. Yeah. I call it all power, you know. The creator, Allah, yeah. Yahweh. The creator, Allah, Yahweh, the great spirit, God, Jehovah. The master of all. Yes. Never poke fun at and or make insulting remarks about anyone's attempts, because everybody's just attempting at communicating with your creator. As you can see a person, you know, praying a certain way, I mean, and, you know, you think that it's peculiar or something like that, and you start laughing, don't do that. Right. I mean, you don't know what it takes to create, you know, for a person to uh, produce an avenue to get in touch with his or her creator. Leave that alone. I mean, you say, well, I don't, I, we don't do that. I mean, that's, we don't have that in our ceremony and all like that. One person might be lighting a candle. Another person might be doing like I do, just breathe in and out and hold my breath and then release it. Uh, that gets me in touch with the creator keeps me in touch because when I stop breathing I can really tell that I've stopped breathing all right I deliberately hold my breath the creator allows me to do that I can hold my breath because the creator made my body in such a way that my mind can tell me to hold my breath and I'll do that like I do every morning yes sir I do sometimes during the day I just hold my breath 
and then release it because it becomes very uncomfortable when I hold my breath. But then, what does that remind me of? What is going on when I am asleep and completely unaware of everything? I'm not even aware that I'm asleep. But the Creator keeps me breathing. The Creator keeps you and breathing. not only that, the Creator can stop me from breathing while I'm asleep. Anytime we get and ready. I'll never to. wake up. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Now that reminds me of what? That I have a Creator. You have a Creator. Really full of you are not all that on your own. That's right. Everything that you are came from something else. Intelligent energy. And don't you ever forget ever that. Ever forget that. All righty. Well, guess what? <laughs> on next week's show, which should be the... The last in this format concerning uh, the area, rather, of religion. We're going to start on the bottom of page 271, and I give you this little heads up. You might want to look at what are the three questions to always ask a person who says that he or she is not satisfied with something that has happened or is happening. Okay, so we've come to the close of our show.